Okay, welcome back to another CSS Basics video where I teach you the basics of CSS uh, and we are moving forward um, toward creating our own one page website. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about something that's called the CSS box model. Now the CSS box model is used like you can see here for design and for layout and what it is is that there is there's a box around each element on the page and then you can manipulate uh, some of the space uh, and the border around that box. So um, you can see here uh, this is our content so this will be like our element let's say a paragraph or a heading um, a div, an image, something like that right in our HTML and then outside of that we can create what's called padding and the padding is space that exists between the content and then the border that we can also apply to the content. And then outside of that is what's called the margin. And the margin is a space in between this content, uh, this element, and another element. So if there were two, two content elements side by side, we could put space in between the two elements and space them apart. Uh, we could also use padding for that. Uh, commonly we would use margin. There are some ways that when, when the screen starts to shrink down uh, you'll see the differences between using padding and using margin and the way that things break on the page and things like that. So um, there are some more nuanced types of things but this is generally uh, what we use to create white space and uh, space between elements on a page. Alright, well I have a setup here um, we are going to use uh, this p tag. So all I have is a div <coughs> and it's set up with a p tag inside of it. And let's see. Okay, so it's a div with a p tag inside of it. It's very, and I only did that because I want to be able to highlight that this is the actual element. That's the only reason I'm even making that a P. But what we're going to style, we're going to style the div around it. So if we look at our uh, box model, the first thing we have to tell the browser is how wide it is. Now the default you can see is 100% full width, right? Which we could use. It would be easier for us to see if we just, if we actually call out a width of the element. So let's say width is 400 pixels and then now it only allows this uh, element to be 400 pixels so uh, it'll help us to see everything a little bit better I think and then let's first look at the border okay so we can put a border around any element and the way we do that is we say border colon and then we have three properties the first one is going to be the border width 10 pixels and then the second property is going to be the border style the common style is going to be solid although there are others you can see that it puts a solid line uh, you can do things like dotted or dashed okay so there's some there's some other different types of border styles that you're going to use but for the most part on the web most people are going to use uh, a solid line for a border and then the last one is a color so we could choose any color that we wanted to let's just choose red okay so around our element <clears throat> around the div there is a, a red border of 10 pixels so it's 10 pixels on each side and then if we want to you see how this is kind of up against the space here we want to create some space so we want to make sure that there's some padding in between uh, this border and the inside text and the way that we do that is we use something called padding and padding can be in any unit that you want to uh, we're just going to do pixels right here let's just do 20 pixels of padding and you see how it creates 20 pixels of even padding all the way around. Okay, so um, this is a shorthand 
if you only have padding and then just one number that means it's going to apply that number in four directions it's going to apply it to the top the right the bottom and the left equally now if it's the same thing as writing this this will be the longhand property and gives us the exact same thing so this is the top it goes like a clock top right bottom left okay so it moves like this it's like a clock so whenever we're dealing with margin or we're dealing with padding um, we get this there's four possible um, values that we can give so it, let's say we wanted to do to make a change to it and you'll be able to see the changes so here we see top is 20 to the right is 50 to the bottom is a um, not a thousand but a hundred and then to the left is 10 so now you can see that we've actually created a very irregular padding here uh, just by changing these values <clears throat> there's a second shorthand property uh, that if you only use two instead of four now what you do is this number represents the top and the bottom and then this second number represents the left and the right often you want to create uniform uh, spacing between the top and the bottom and the left and the right and those two things are tied together um, but you want to make them different so you want to make the top and bottom different than the left and right and so this is the way that you would do that is you would say uh, 20 pixels 50 pixels this represents the top and bottom this represents the left and right values and then if you want everything to be one uniform size then you just use one number and then that creates a uniform spacing all the way around so that's what we're doing here um, <clears throat> and then finally let's add a background color to the uh, div just so you can see things a little bit more clearly um, the background is uh, no, that's not right. Let's try E. Okay. So now you can see that there is some spacing here. This is the content, and then all the way around. Now, if we remove, if we remove any of this, then all it does is remove the. Uh, like if we take our P tag off, then you can see the inside of this element. Um, we wind up with the same thing. It's just that I don't have the ability to put a, uh, any background color on that. I just wanted to be able to show you the difference between them. But you can see that this is uh, straight up the div with no, no uh, P tag in between. But there's padding, uh, we have our border, and then outside of that we're going to create what's called margin. Now margin uh, if you remember, margin is a space that's outside of the border. So when we put a border on our element, uh, the margin is outside of that. So it's the space between this um, heading here and this box. It'll also be the space between between this box and the side or uh, the viewport. Okay. Um, so let's say a margin of 50 pixels now margin works the same way that we were talking about padding if you put one number then that one number is going to be represented on all sides so you would have 50 pixels all the way around and you can see how it shifts and moves and what it does is it adds 50 pixels here 50 pixels here you can't see anything because there's nothing butting against it but there's 50 and 50 here as well so when you add that in, there's 50 pixels here, there's 50 pixels here. And then this is a way that we create space in between different elements. So we're creating a space between uh, this div element and this h1 element on the page. <coughs> and essentially that's the basics of the box model. Now things change a little bit, like if you take the border off, you don't have to have a border. Uh, but there is still margin there so you can see that there's still margin being applied uh, there's still padding you know right here so even if you didn't have a background color and you 
took the padding off you can see that I can still create I can still create margin here just in space just by adding that even though visually there's nothing necessarily around it but I can also create uh, some space by adding padding so you see how that works but this is uh, it's going to react in a different way uh, whenever um, whenever it begins to interact with elements uh, there are some differences between margin and padding and those are things that really experientially you just kinda have to use uh, as you begin to understand more about how the elements on the page uh, are fitting together um, it is possible to do uh, negative numbers I'll show you that very quickly and so if we do negative numbers let's say negative you know 100 we can actually pull that where the space around it is a minus 100 pixels so it actually can overlap elements and things like that so um, if you get stuck in some situations that is a helpful thing to have and so uh, just to let you know that you can apply uh, negative values to these properties as well alright well that is the CSS box model and we will use these properties of padding and margin and border all the time uh, almost almost every single element that, that you're going to deal with has a width and a height and um, a border padding and margin so it's just the way that we use um, layout in CSS in order to create space between elements so uh, thanks for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below uh, I love to hear your thoughts and um, answer any questions that you have and as always I'll see you in the next video